Well, uh, I am okay with keeping some dicey hands when we're playing a deck like this because we're not going to have the option to mulligan a whole lot when our, our mulligans aren't going to be very good, basically. It's very unlikely that we're going to get much better hands most of the time. This one, though, I think we can throw back. That seems like a safe bet. This hand is one of those ones, though, like I said, a lot of the time not super impressed with this. I mean, we don't have blue, we don't have, um, like, blue for either of these, we don't have a red mana. Having the one off-color white kind of sucks, but not three mana to play either of these. We just have to get lucky, though. Like, for example, having an island directly on top of our library. Something like that might be really lucky. <laughs> Ooh, if we're lucky enough, we could go 3-0 here. Surprised we made it out of round one alive. This deck might be better than I'm giving it credit for. I mean, it does have Tezzeret. That alone is a pretty big upside. Tezzeret is a Planeswalker, and Planeswalkers traditionally are pretty good in draft. Now what do we got? Narnum Cobra. I can take two damage for a couple turns. Not excited by the prospect, but I don't have anything better to do. Implement of Malice is... An awesome draw for us. Every artifact makes Bastion Inventor cheaper. And that's very good. So next turn we Foundry Inspector and then hopefully implement, get close to Bastion Inventor. I suppose that I could play Defiant Salvager and sacrifice an implement to get it to a 3-3. Three, three. But then I'm putting Bastion Inventor further away. Might not be a bad idea, though. What did I think about that? That actually seems pretty decent. Sure, we're trading the Defiant Salvager for a Narnum Cobra, but they have to pay the mana to actually use it, which slows them down a little. And we're not going to be able to get Bastion Inventor down next turn anyways, even if I do play Foundry Inspector. And I don't want to trade Foundry Inspector for Narnum Cobra, because that does the same thing. Like, it just slows us down from the Bastion Inventor. Plus, Foundry Inspector is pretty good in our deck. I'm going to just sal Salvager here and sacrifice the implement. I still get to draw a card off of it. And like I said, it makes it a little bit more awkward for our opponent to attack in. Might want to do that the proper way. And yeah, we're... Getting a two, like our opponent's getting a two for one off the Narnum Cobra, but not really at the same time because this does draw us a card. It's not entirely a two for one. I'm definitely willing to trade Defiant Salvager for the Narnum Cobra too because we have the Bastion Inventor and I don't want them to Death Touch that down. This card's much more important. I mean, this is all perfectly happy for me. I'm okay with that. Foundry Inspector here first, because that means next turn I can either Bastion Mastodon, or I can play both of these for uh, just four mana. Uh-oh. Fatal Push. Ew. That's a pretty good card. Now we really need to draw land, because Bastion Mastodon would be great. I can go Bastion Mastodon into the Bastion Inventor, and we're solid. If I don't draw land, well, things get a lot more awkward. It's not bad, but uh, it's so much better if we had the land. Yep, okay, so I've got Watchful Automaton. That can trade for the Pima Aether Seer. I think that's fine. We'll just want to play the long game. We've got Hidden Stockpile here. That'll give us a lot of grindy late game potential. I don't think our opponent attacked the Pima Aethers here. Alright, unless they have something like Hunt the Weak. That would let them attack with it. Ice over Hidden Stockpile. Yep, that seems to be the play. It's annoying that the ability can still be used, but I mean that's why Ice over is just not a very good card. There's a lot of abilities like that in Kaladesh and in Aether Revolt where, I mean, they still get to use 
abilities of their cards while well, they're still tapped. And I mean, it, it doesn't help either having a, a format that relies on a lot of revolt triggers. So there's a lot of ways to like return things to hand and different stuff like that. Let's get the Bastion Mastered on down. Whirler Maker is a pretty good end game too. So Hidden Stockpile versus Whirler Maker is very, very interesting. We'll have to see what comes out on top. If they're just spending four mana to make a Thopter here, I'm okay with that. I don't think we're in a lot of trouble. If they have other plays to make and the game goes really long, Whirler Maker gets scarier and scarier. For now, I'll just attack the Bastion Mastodon. We'll play the Inventor. They're either chump blocking or just taking four. Yeah, they're just going to try and make one ones, it looks like. That I'm fine with. So I'll have a lot of chump blockers that I have to bust through, but I can do that. I wish I had a good artifact removal spell in my deck. I don't really. Did we take a decommission for the sideboard? I remember us looking at one, but I also remember it being tough to justify because we didn't have a lot of planes. So I might not have grabbed it, and I didn't end up with any green, so... Odds that we can kill this Whirler Maker are actually pretty low. Didn't attack with the Thopter. I'm surprised by that. I thought they would attack just because of the fact that they're not going to be able to block here anyways. You might as well get in for your one point of damage. Maybe they just want to chump block with it. We are putting them under a lot of pressure. Bastion Mastodon and swing. And I actually like the Oval Chase Daredevil here. Implement exam of Examination with Hidden Stockpile is really cool. Like, that'll help us. But uh, opponents on 8 life, choked up on mana, seems better to just keep threatening them. I can do this later. Plus, if I do it later, I might be able to get some value off of the Oval Chase Daredevil. Yeah, attack the team. I don't even really need the Vigilance on the Bastion Mastodon. I'm not racing here. I'm okay trading off anything. I imagine they're going to block, double block on here, trade this with this. Which puts them to four. No creatures in play. I redraw the Daredevil because I play Implement. Or, yeah, either way. Hmm. Should have one more land. Yep. This is the block that makes the most sense to me. Let's play that. Always yes, always yield. Keep getting back the Daredevil. And let's draw two cards. Oh, that's a pretty good one. Let's get the Night Market guard down to keep threatening them. They can use the Whirler Maker, have a Chump Blocker, but that's still killing them. So they've got to have something pretty decent in their hand, especially when we have Tezzeret. Yep, we just get to kill that. They do get to make a token, so they can do both. But that should mean they're dead, right? Yeah. Like, if their plan is to just use Whirler Maker, then they're actually dead here. They can block the Bastion Mastodon and still take four. No way out of it if they're just using the Whirler Maker. And it seems like that would be the case with two cards in hand. Mmm, Tezzeret just slamming people. Tezzeret is just bodying our opponents. That is what this deck is supposed to be, though. It's supposed to grab some very powerful cards and play with some 
nasty, nasty stuff, but with a very, <laughs> very awkward mana base. We're managing to do exactly what it's supposed to. We've gotten the Tezzeret lots, and it's kind of perfect. Bastion Inventor and Bastion Mastodon there were also very solid. Oval Chase Daredevil in this deck is insane. Both the Tezzeret and the Hidden Stockpile, it's just impossible to kill. Which I am very happy for. This card is in just unbelievable. I'm so glad that I picked it up over that Renegade map. I, it was a Renegade map or... Oh, what else was it? Maybe like... Was this another implement or something? It was some other artifact that I was thinking about. Yeah, I think it might have just been implement. God, I'm really happy that I just took the Daredevil. At the time, I didn't have a lot of artifacts, so I wasn't sure that it would work out, but it's it's definitely worked out. I mean, Hidden Stockpile alone should have been a clue that I should have the Daredevil. I don't know why I ever questioned it, because Daredevils looked very good every time. I'm just going to send this back. Again, our sideboard doesn't look like it has a lot of options. One of the disadvantages of playing a deck like this, your deck ends up taking a lot of picks that are just kind of unplayable just to make the rest of your deck work. And you can't really cut cards like mana fixing and things like that, so you don't get a lot of flexibility in sideboarding. Occasionally, but a lot of the time you're, you're just kind of stuck with what you have. Here, all we need is any land. Oh. Hmm. Defiant Salvager is going to be leaving us, I guess. Pretty funny hand for our opponent to see. Not as awkward as a lot of them, that's for sure. Considering how many colors we're playing, this actually looks like a reasonable deck. Not a good one right now, I would say, but reasonable enough. Hey, yeah, there's a mountain. I don't need to show my opponent that yet, because they don't know the, what we drew. Give them a little less information. Opponent did scry... And they put it to the bottom. So it's not a bad sign for us. Ooh, Spire of Industry. Keep giving them no information. Now there's two cards they don't know about. If we'd played, like, Mountain Spire, then our opponent just knows every card in our hand. I don't like giving them away free information when I don't have to. It doesn't make any difference for what we're playing here, either. Druid of the Cowl. That's a scary card, because... Ramping up to something big can put us under a lot of pressure. Our mana has been on point. We've been really lucky with that. I'm going to play the Watchful Automaton. I'm more willing to trade that with Narnum Cobra than Night Market Guard. Don't like trading either, but I think the Watchful's slightly better. And now they have a 5-drop, which is what I'm worried about. Because if it's big enough to block the Fleet Wheel... We've got a long game ahead of us, and I don't have a lot to do. We need something pretty balmy to get out of that. Eh, well, yeah, that's annoying. At least Fleet Wheel's still good. Take four on the backswing again, which I'm not happy about, but I don't think there's a better option. Now you could just play the Night Market card and trade with the Narnum Cobra. But then we're in a situation where I can't crew the Fleet Wheel Cruiser when I play it the turn after that, and it's kind of the same. We're kind of in the same situation that we are right now, which I don't like. Might as well at least get the 5 damage in earlier. This way we can play Night Market Guard, and we can actually block with the Fleet Wheel Cruiser. It has positive blocks against Druid of the Cowl. I can probably take 2 from Narnum Cobra, and if they have something bigger, then it's even better. Plus, I want to trade the Fleet Wheel Cruiser off before I want to trade off Night Market Guard. Just because of the simple fact that Cruiser isn't always a creature. And that's a really big liability if we're on the back. If we're on the back foot, then it's a really big problem to not be able to use that as a creature all the time. Opponent's just racing. Whirler Maker was really good for us to see, honestly. It's very helpful. And Cogworker's Puzzle Knot's nice. Because now Night Market Guard can crew the Fleet Wheel. Attack in for five. I can play Cogworkers and just blocks here. So we're kind of winning this game. Are we just doing it? <laughs> Is this deck going to actually make a finals? I would be stunned if it wins. If this wins, I, I don't know anything about magic anymore. 
this deck was a hot pile. It does have a Tezzeret, and I've drawn Tezzeret a lot, which makes any pile a lot better, but even so, I don't think this deck should be doing as good as it is. 10 and 10. Opponent has a lot of mana, though. God, I'd love to draw something like a Bastion Inventor. Although, Whirler Maker is going to really cause us issues. If this game goes long, I'm going to have a very tough time beating the Whirler. No artifact removal is a big downside. Opponent attacks for two. Yep, that's what I'd expect. And they can trade the Narnum Cobra for the... Fleet Wheel Cruiser. Implement a Malice is actually really good. Let's play... Hmm. Yeah, I like Implement a Malice. Make them lose a card. Crack the Puzzle Knot, attack for 8. Although, uh, they just trade a Whirler Maker token for that. Hmm. I like cutting them off of a card here, because they don't have many left in their hand. It's likely that they have something pretty decent. And I want to see another card. I could have played in the Implement of Examination, though. It's one more mana, so I would have had enough to do that. Fatal push on the servo. Huh. At this point, anything is a bit of an advantage that way. Life crafter's gift, so alright. Hmm. Fen hauler is a good one. Does put us in an awkward position though. Right. I can play the Cogworkers Puzzle Knot token. I think I just need to leave back the Night Market Guard. I kind of just want to play Implement of Examination. Maximize our mana here. It's not fantastic, but it does make the Fen Hauler slightly cheaper. I can still use the Cogworkers Puzzle Knot next turn. I'm not going to be able to attack. I just want to leave back the Fleet Wheel and trade it off with something. Mm -hmm. Or do I want to trade it? Take... Seven. Yeah, I have to. I don't have a choice. I have to trade something. I mean, it's possible that I could go, like, Fen Hauler, attack with the Fleet Wheel, and then attack the Fen Hauler, but that's awkward. Okay, so attack with the, attack with the, uh, block with the Night Market Guard. Well, sorry, crew the, crew the Cruiser. <laughs> I can't talk here. Block the Druid of the Cowl, because this can't be blocked by artifact creatures. That might be a big advantage. Take an extra point, but that's alright. Try and crack back with Fen Hauler for the win in a couple turns. Nightmaker Guard still stops the Cobra. Probably using the token. Oh, oh, that's so bad. A really good draw from our opponent. Um... Uh, that's not what I want to see. Oh, that's so awful. You know what? I probably should I should have left open white and cracked the cro cog workers. That's what I should have done. Nonum Cobra. Hmm. I should have done that differently. 
I made a big mistake. That'll cost us the game. Yeah, that'll cost us the game. Oh. Not sure how I win this. And it would have been bad either way, but at least if I cracked the cog workers, if I had left blue, if I hadn't left blue open, if I left white open, not cracked the implement, could have played the land, cracked the cog workers, been able to block Fen Hauler and a 1 1 on the Lifecraft and the 3 1 here. And we're 4 versus 10 in a Whirler Maker, but obviously much better than what we're stuck looking at now, because now I'm stuck like. Blocking, blocking both, trading for life craft, leaving them that, taking some trample damage. It's not good. It's not good. And that Whirly Maker just kills us. Okay, block and block block. Awful. Awful, awful. What also sucks is that I can't kill both creatures. Definitely need to assign damage to lifecraft first, though. Trample's too important. I made a very bad mistake. And at this point, we're almost happy if they use the Whirler Maker just because it means they don't have any more gas. I can't pay the life for the Spire of Industry, so even though I could Death Touch and block the Narnum Cobra, that's just not gonna work. It's not a good enough idea. That one point of life is probably worth our creature. Hate to say that, but I think it is. Another land there was awful. But I put myself into this position in the first place. I should have a Narnum Cobra facing a 1-1 one -one and be at 4 life. That's where we should be at here. I might have even been able to leave up Death Touch. Double block. Take one, they make another token, and I'm dead in the air unless I find something very good. Don't know what, but it has to be very good. <laughs> Foundry Inspector is not it. I didn't even crack the map on my upkeep, which is something I should have done. It's a very small upside, but just to have less our, uh, lands in our deck so that the draws are a little bit better. Yeah, I didn't play this game particularly well. I made a lot of little mistakes, just tiny play errors. Good things to learn from, though. We'll concede this game and move on to game three. I think we still lose that anyways if I had played it correctly, but that's just an excuse. We were in a really deep hole, and my only way out of it was to actually make the token off of the Cogworkers puzzle lot, and I just didn't do it. So I do have the decommission. I'd forgotten about that. It's tough on our mana but it's also really good against that Whirler Maker. And a long game is super awkward that way. I could just take out the ice over for it. It's not a fantastic trade, but it's reasonable enough, I think. Do I want to take out any islands for that? I don't think I do, just because Contraband Kingpin needs to come down early. Hidden Stockpile... While still needing white and being a 2-drop, doesn't actually need to come down as early as Contraband Kingpin does. This needs to be an early so that I can get the advantage off of art all the artifacts that I play. Topping this off after you've played 4 artifacts is awful. Hidden Stockpile, doesn't matter, you can still use it. So I'm just going to send this. 
That decommission seems fairly important. Helps to kill off a Nonum Cobra with a bunch of tokens on it, too. We would love to play first, and we'd love to draw well. Let's try and do both of those things. Well, <laughs> it looks like we are. This is fantastic. All four colors of mana because of the Renegade map. Bastion Inventor is great. Hold off on Renegade map for a couple turns, because if we draw an island, then we can just power out the Bastion Inventor a lot faster. And we can play everything else very easily. This is really good. Opponent also mulliganed. Are we doing it? We could be doing it, everybody. Because we go Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot. If we draw an island, then go Watchful Automaton, and we get a turn four Bastion Inventor. Oh, goodness. Okay. We really need that island. I mean, actually you can crack the Renegade map for it. It doesn't really change the clock here. Because I'm going to have to play Watchful Automaton next turn anyways. If I'd had this first, then it would have made a difference to draw the island. Because that's two artifacts. So next turn I'd be able to play Bastion Inventor, have it on turn three. I'm slightly reluctant to crack the Renegade map still, because the more artifacts that I have, the better Tezzeret is. But still pretty good. Ooh, Spire of Industry. Well, there's our island. Let's play the Watchful Automaton for now, though. Next turn, I'm almost certain that I just play the Tezzeret. Bastion Inventor can come down afterwards. This is absolutely nuts. I don't think that we could draw better than this. Tezzeret has shown up an awful lot. Definitely a reason why we're winning these games, and it might be for some scheming. I kind of want them to play a big, dirtily creature. That actually qualifies. That's something I would like to kill. I am A-OK -okay with that dying. I need to get rid of that as soon as possible. Bastion Inventor next turn. And our opponent's probably crying. Cogworker's Puzzle Knot is free with Bastion Inventor too. I would be pretty annoyed at what's happening here. Plus the Cogworkers, I can kill something with five toughness. Oh. So ridiculous. Yeah, Gifted Aetherborn, just gonna go down here. Play the Cogworkers. Kill the Aetherborn. And then start tapping things through Bastion Inventor. Oh, Heroic Intervention. Um, okay, the Hexproof, right, right, right. I was going to say, Indestructible doesn't stop that, but the Hexproof will. For a moment, I was a little bit confused. So, Bastion Inventor still. Or I could just play another Watchful Automaton. No, this is fine. Double block the Gifted Aetherborn. I'm not super excited about that, but I think it's okay. We'll start plussing Tezzeret and killing more creatures in a few turns. Heroic Intervention was a good one. We're hardly in bad shape, though. I mean, I get to get a land out of our deck, draw a card, and put a 1-1 into play just off of those. And then I have Scries as well. Plus Tezzeret just sitting here gaining us value. Not sure what our opponent has in hand, but it can't be that much better than that. Alright, pretty good. I'll trade the Bastion Inventor for it now. I mean, especially if they're going to come at Tezzeret. Yeah. 
So they get a good two for two there. Hunt the Weak and uh, Gifted Aetherborn for Watchful Automaton, Bastion Inventor. I think that all of those kinds of trades are in our favor, though, considering that we have the Tezzeret. Plus him. I'm just going to get an island here, because I don't really want to keep paying life for this. Play the Thopterist, and then Watchful Automaton. Yeah, like, our board is still very, very strong. Opponent with only two cards in hand. Don't see how they're going to get out of this. Certainly possible, but they're in a deep hole. The advantage that they have right now is they have a lot of life, and we don't have a ton of pressure on them. Oh, okay. Or they can just concede. People don't want to keep playing against Tezzerets for some reason. <laughs> Oval Chase Daredevil would have been really, really nice. I mean, that would be a way for us to actually pressure our opponent fast and just kill them. Again, Tezzeret, Daredevil, pretty silly combo. But, yeah, that uh, worked out just about perfectly. Couldn't have asked for a better draw. Getting that Tezzeret was insane. Early Bastion Inventor, early Tezzeret. Top decking the Thopterist when we did. We had amazing draws here. Like, our draws were really fantastic, so... Had a lot of luck, and we're going on to the finals with this absolute monstrosity. I was saying that this was an escalating series of bad ideas to try and play 5-color, but apparently I don't know anything about magic, because this deck is doing awesome. Don't mind a little bit of mana fixing. Being with the Swamp I thought was the best way to do it, because I could get either the uh, Contraband Kingpin or the uh, Hidden Stockpile. Oh my god. We have a game.